Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. My friends, I just can't see how the judge could possibly fall for the SEC's latest tricks. The SEC is outright lying uh, to, to the judge uh, regarding the attorney-client uh, privilege claims that they've been making. So you may recall that back in January, uh, Judge Netburn did rule that the, uh, the uh, uh, emails associated with the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass speech and the drafts, all that... Uh, that that should be handed over to Ripple. It's part of the case because uh, it was deemed by the judge, which means by the court, that the uh, the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass speech, it was just his personal opinion. Now, the SEC, of course, understandably didn't like that. There's probably some exculpatory evidence in there that the judge just <laughs> demanded be handed over. So they've been fighting harder than, for this, this specific topic, harder than anything else in this case. So they asked the judge to reconsider, and I've covered that before too. Took some time, but the judge reconsidered, and then about a month ago, a little over a month ago, I suppose, we we got word from the judge, no, it's reconsidered, and this is still Bill Hinman's, uh, you know, personal opinion, and you still have to hand over the uh, emails and speech drafts from the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass speech. Then the SEC, so that, so mind you, that, that was already a reconsideration of the consideration. Now, this, this latest attempt is a reconsideration of the reconsideration because they're claiming now that all of the, the uh, emails associated with the Ethereum free pass speech from Bill Hinman, it's, it's all privileged information because it's part of an attorney-client privilege, as if Bill Hinman hired his fellow co-worker attorneys to, uh, to, to give personal opinion, uh, to, to give per or legal advice that he could have a personal opinion effectively. And never mind that it wasn't, it was not exclusively attorneys that were shared this information. It wasn't only, they were just lay people too. So are they part of the attorney client privilege too? It's just such a bogus argument. So I'm going to share with you the, the, the SEC's latest attempt to trick the judge um, into to falling for these bogus arguments, which are basically a rehash of arguments that they've already made. But I printed up the document. Luckily, this thing was only, this was only five pages. So I got some dead trees up in my hands. I highlighted just a few, few, few parts and, um, and made, made some notes, so I'll be sharing this with you. I also have opinion from attorney Jeremy Hogan and also uh, XRP community member and attorney Fred Rispoli. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Rispoli, he is the uh, attorney that uh, filed a lawsuit against Jay Clayton and Bill Henman. And for now, he's, he's withdrawn that, but he has every intention of going back and filing that. But after speaking with attorney John Deaton in terms of timing, there are some reasons... Uh, that decided, okay, just pull this thing back for now, but after that, they're going to go in guns blazing, as far as I know, and and, and refile the thing. But uh, before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Uh, and <laughs> although before digging into this, if you can look at your screen, please do so. Uh, XRP community member Brian Monarch made this picture of Kim Jong Gary and tagged me. So I want to tell you, Brian, I laughed quite a bit about seeing this. I had, so of course, I retweeted it just a little bit earlier this evening. It's, it's, so what he did was clearly took a real picture of Kim Jong-un and then slapped Gary Gensler's face right on it, and that's how you get SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim Jong Gary. <laughs> that's exactly what I envisioned in my mind. That's, it's, it's spot on, Brian. It's, it's just a fantastic job that you did there. <laughs> Uh, shout out to uh, uh, James Filan, who of course is an XRP community member and attorney, who shared this most recent legal filing and wrote, The SEC has filed its reply in support of its April 29th, 2022 letter claiming that the attorney-client privilege protects internal SEC documents relating to Hinman's speech. Um, and let's just go ahead. You know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to share with you perspective from attorney Rispoli and attorney Hogan, and then I'll share with you uh, just a couple parts that I highlighted. Although, honestly, some of what they're talking about, I may just run through anyway, because they're talking about some of the things that I already highlighted and made notes about. But anyway, here, here's the first thing that I found from Fred Rispoli that I wanted to share with you. He wrote, SEC is now Ben Stiller's character from Tropic Thunder. I mean, it literally argued the same thing as it did in the motion for reconsideration, but, but putting attorney-client privilege for uh, the deliberative process privilege. And uh, SEC also is now making XRP community arguments. Am I taking crazy pills? And folks, he's not kidding. A lot of these arguments, it's just the same thing that uh, the judge already slapped down here. Um, and so he shared this screen grab from the, uh, from the uh, legal filing here. And uh, I'll read a parts of this. He highlighted parts that he found to be particularly interesting. So check this out. It reads as follows. 
While the court has ruled the speech reflected Director Hinman's personal views as opposed to official agency policy, it has never held that Director Hinman was only was acting only in his personal capacity. And actually, given that I just cited that, let me just cover the, the, the first page because like the first few sentences, it's completely absurd. Let me just jump around. It, it's, it's, it'll segue just fine. Check this out. Um, <laughs> can't believe the SEC. They wrote, uh, Dear Judge Nepper, in accordance with the court's May 4th, 2022 order, the SEC respectfully replies in support of its April 29th, 2022 letter explaining why the attorney-client privilege protects internal SEC documents relating to former Director Hedman's June 14th, 2018 speech. So I'll just pause to note, of course, that's the Ethereum free pass speech that they're talking about. Then they continue. Defendant's response focuses on their contention that Director Hinman developed and gave the speech in his personal capacity such that none of the speech communications are privileged. This court, however, has never ruled that Director Hinman developed and gave the remarks in his personal capacity. It instead ruled the speech presented Director Hinman's personal views. And upon reading that, I stopped and I laughed about that out loud. I really, as I was going through, I just I started reading, I'm highlighting, and I'm like, this is absolutely absurd. So the SEC now argues that Hinman's speech is his personal opinion, but given in official capacity so that attorney-client privilege somehow applies. Can you believe what they're arguing here? <laughs> they're differentiating, they're trying to anyway, between personal few, views and personal capacity. My gosh. What a bunch of gobbledygook nonsense crap here. Um, and then jumping back to what uh, attorney Rispoli was covering here, there's another part that he highlighted. In the speech, he speaks as a government official saying, for example, quote, we stand prepared to provide more formal interpretive or no action guidance about the proper characterization of a digital asset in a proposed use. Um, then he wrote, uh, they wrote, the fact that senior level corporation finance law attorneys drafted the speech provides further proof that the speech was developed as part of Director Hedman's official duties. Folks, that is what the XRP community has been arguing. That, that's why you can see Attorney Rispoli wrote at the end of this tweet, he wrote, am I taking crazy pills? Because again, uh, the, the SEC is now making XRP community arguments. Yes, we are saying that this, it, 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 truth be told, that Bill Hedman's Ethereum free pass speech that is something he did within his official duties. That's what I... Now, the court disagrees with us. The, the, the judge said, no, that's just his personal opinion. But here, the SEC's arguing what the XRP community is arguing. <laughs> Can you believe this crap? I know, it's unbelievable. It's, it, this is it. I just don't know how the judge could be so stupid as the fall for us. I don't, I don't think the judge is stupid. I, I Just to be clear, I, I, I respect the judge, actually. Uh, but that's why I'm saying this is so stupid. I don't know how the judge could be stupid enough to fall for this. I don't think she is. Uh, no, here's another part of what they wrote. SEC attorneys across many offices and divisions could not and did not use official time and resources to provide input on another employee's purely personal errand. Uh, Director Hinman could not use agency employees to help him with personal tasks. Indeed, SEC employees cannot encourage, direct, coerce, or request a subordinate to use official time to perform activities other than those required in the performance of official duties or authorized in accordance with law or regulation. SEC staff could use government time and resources to draft and review the speech only because Director Hinman was acting as an SEC official when developing the speech, even if the spe final speech only reflected his views. <laughs> and they're still trying to have it both ways at the end. So they're arguing the stuff that the XRP community has been arguing in terms of, right, he did this and it's... it's it, it's not just his opinion. It's official SEC decree. Look at the damn thing. But then they're still saying, so they're saying that, like we argue here within the XRP community, but but, but still, it's somehow only his personal views. They're actually arguing. They're arguing both things. And, and just a handful of a couple sentences here. They're arguing both things. It's, it's done within a, an official context here, but it's still only his personal views, which are not official context. What? It's a bunch of nonsense. It's incoherent, folks. It's completely incoherent. And so here's another tweet from Attorney Rispoli. He wrote, My head hurts. Things are falling apart rapidly for SEC now. Well, ain't that the truth? Things not looking so hot here. Um, and then here's some more from Attorney Rispoli. He wrote, This is one of the worst briefs I've seen from the SEC to date. It is a 180 from the Hinman Declaration. 
It has virtually no case law cited compared to the dozens of cases cited in Ripple's opposition. It fails miserably at explaining why SEC lawyers assisted Hinman on the parts that were personal. Yeah, can you explain that? How did, how did they do that? How did the, uh, the uh, SEC lawyers actually assist Hinman with the parts that were just personal? How does, can, can you square that circle? Like, how does that work there? And then he says, It lies about Ripple's very clear position in the litigation. But perhaps most importantly, I can tell Hinman and SEC have now had many conversations about a certain someone coming after him, given this brief's new version of events, coupled with the odd references to criminal conduct. Here's free legal advice, SEC and Mr. Hinman. You can still get out of this, even now. Take your money from Ripple and settle. We will go away after clarity. So that's what attorney uh, Fred Rispoli had to say on the topic. Um, and then also, uh, somebody named Keith from the community said, so uh, does Ripple get to reply to this? And Fred wrote, no. Uh, the order goes as follows. Number one, motion. Two, opposition. Three, reply. SEC has done one and three. Ripple did number two. Ripple could ask for permission to do a sir reply because it technically uh, some of the SEC arguments in three weren't raised in one, although they were in a roundabout way raised in earlier motions. So, uh, so no, don't anticipate that there's going to be another reply from Ripple. I made a separate video when Ripple did reply. That was a fun one. I enjoyed that one, and I hope you guys did too. That was seriously, I was look, I was so looking forward to seeing that, and it, it just it did not disappoint. But yeah, the, the SEC gets the final word on this. Um, and then there was also uh, this. Um, somebody named XRP Serpent wrote to Mr. Ripoll, or Spoli and said, there's one other option for SEC besides settlement. Drop the case. I hope they don't do that, though. And uh, Attorney Rispoli shared something that apparently had said before. I personally hadn't seen this, but I found this very interesting. He wrote, I've mentioned this before. The SEC cannot drop the case because of Fed R Civ P41A. Uh, SEC has to get Ripple to agree to drop it, and then Judge Torres would have to sign off on it. No way Ripple agrees to dismiss without clarity when it is killing the SEC. Yeah, <laughs> and so I'll say this. With all the pretrial stuff that we've seen, just, well, just about all of it, uh, Ripple, they clearly have the upper hand just dominating here. Why would you want this thing to be dropped? Because then the SEC can just bring a, a back another suit in the future, and then you don't have clarity for XRP. I don't think that Ripple would want that anyway. So, I, it, it, so this rule being cited here, I didn't know it even existed, that's cool, though, because that is a concern that had been raised. Not that I thought that the SEC would actually go that route. I mean, if, if the SEC wins out of this, they're going to settle rather than drop this, because if you drop the case, it just looks like a loss to them. They don't want they don't want to have egg on their face. I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, and then there's this from Attorney Hogan, who wrote the following on this. He said, I'm not sure if, if this brief by the SEC arguing attorney-client privilege is laughable or genius. I will hand it to him, though. He goes for it with gusto. As with most things in life, the winner gets to decide how history treats this brief. And so here's the gambit. Uh, first, argue that the speech was Hinman's personal opinion. Second, after the judge agrees with you, change your argument to say that the speech was the division's opinion. And third, argue there is a difference between giving a speech in his personal capacity and his personal view. And folks, that, that's, I just got to pause it. That is one of the most laughable things in this. To try and parse out these words, there's a difference between personal capacity and personal view to make a stupid point that the, um, the, 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 the judge already ruled against. Twice. <laughs> and then Mr. Hogan writes, Fourth, after Ripple changes its argument based on the court's ruling... Uh, accuse Ripple of confusing the issue. So that's where they're lying, right? They're accuse Ripple of confusing the issue. No, 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 they didn't confuse a damn thing. And then he says, fifth, conclude with this zinger below that the SEC and Hinman had a sort of joint interest in the speech. Will Judge Netburn see through the artifice? Time will tell. And um, through context, I understood what the word artifice me meant, but I wasn't familiar with the word, so I looked it up, and uh, really it, it just means clever trick. And so here's the, the screen grab that he shared from this. Um, this is what the SEC wrote. These facts bear no relationship to the facts at issue. Director Hinman's speech was legally and factually related to his duties at the SEC. And um, he and the SEC shared an interest in the speech being accurate and consistent with the advice of the of SEC attorneys. So folks, somehow it's his personal opinion unrelated to the SEC, but it's still related to the SEC because the SEC somehow has an interest in the in the speech being accurate and consistent. 
What in the ever-loving hell? The SEC attorneys writing this jibber-jabber, they have to know that it makes literally no sense. It's incoherent. There, there is nothing to follow here. It's absolutely garbage, incoherent nonsense. That's it. There is no actual thought process here. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's a stupid... Like you could, it's, it's like saying uh, 2 plus 2 is 5 because the sky is blue. Like That's completely incoherent jibber-jabber nonsense. It's a bunch of nonsense. That's what's happening right here. Unreal, folks. Like, how are these adults? I, I just, I don't understand this. Um, and, and so, I, I just, I, I wonder, will the judge fall, fall for all of this disingenuous argument after twice ruling Hinman's speech is his personal opinion and emails and drafts must be handed over? I just, I don't see how this is the case. Um, let me go to one last part here. Then we can wrap this up, I think, finally. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go down to page four. Four, for those of you looking at the screen, I'll scroll on down for you. Yeah, look at section three. Our disclosure would reveal SEC confidences. Oh my gosh, the privilege claim yet again. It reads as follows. Defendants argue that there could be no confidential information concerning the SEC in comments to a speech conveying Director Hinman's personal views. Yet the speech was about the SEC and the application of the securities laws to Ether. As he stated in his declaration, the speech was, quote, Part of the commission's ongoing deliberations about whether officers and sales of ether constituted securities transactions, end quote. Yeah, again, that sounds kind of like what uh, we in the XRP community have been saying. But anyway, uh, SEC continues now. Uh, in his official capacity and in non-public communications with SEC lawyers, Director Hinman confidentially provided and sought feedback about his views on whether offers and sales of digital assets, including ether, constituted securities transactions. The comments on the speech reflect those confidential views and communications. Thus, disclosure would reveal SEC confidential information. So there you have them arguing it again. This is personal opinion, but it's all confidential because, again, it's, it's SEC stuff. And so look, this is what, what I just read there. This is the same argument that the SEC made when claiming emails and speech drafts contain privileged information and the judge twice rejected the argument. They're arguing the same damn thing you can hear. That's what attorney Rispoli was talking about. They're arguing the same damn thing and calling it attorney-client privilege now because they are desperate. There is something in here that's just going to slaughter their case against Ripple. That's my suspicion. My very strong suspicion. So I'll, I'll wrap up the video by bringing back this picture of SEC Supreme Leader and Dictator Kim Jong-Gary. I love this picture. This is absolutely fantastic. I'll wrap up here, though. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.